See in the documentary series The Turkic World Continuation about the most significant, in our opinion, states the Golden Horde's successes, which played an important role in the geopolitics of Eurasia in 15th to 18th centuries. We move towards ourselves, recognizing ourselves in others. Uljas Suleymanov. By the middle of the 14th century, as Genghis withdrew into the shadows in Iran, China, Mavorana and southern Rus, they were replaced by representatives of Juchi family branch who claimed the rights for their share in historical empires. This is about Shabanids, the dynasty of Uzbek Hans. But first let's recall what lands the heirs of Genghis Khan's family owned. Genghis Khan's eldest son, Juchi, received from his father lands with tribes inhabiting them, stretching from the Yurtish to the western borders of the Mongol Empire. Juchi's son, Batu, 1208-1255, with his conquests in Eastern Europe, expanded borders of his Ulus far to the west, by that ensuring the possession of Turkic tribes in Polovsi steppes. The rest of Juchi's Ulus was divided between Batu's brothers, Orda and Sheiban. Orda received the lands on the right bank of the Sirdarya from Signak town near the Karatau mountains to the delta of the river on the Aral seashore, including a strip on the left bank of the delta that extended to the Amudarya, that is, almost the whole eastern coast of the Aral Sea, and also the Sarisu river basin and the Ulutau massif, which separates this basin from Turgai. Later, Orda's canate went down in history as the White Horde. Ak or Da. When dividing the territory to the east and southeast of the southern Urals, Sheban received a significant part of Aktobe region and Turgai. He controlled the steps to the north of the Sirdaria, known as Deshti Kipchak. Kipchak steps. As for his feats of arms, Sheban distinguished himself in 1241 during the Turkic Mongol campaign in Hungary. According to Rashid ad Din, if the Turk Mongols had held the country in their hands, Sheban would have become its ruler. Ujuchi. Juchi had many sons. The fifth of them was Sheiban. He led detachments during the Western Campaign in 1237, distinguished himself during military operations in the territory of present-day Poland, defeated a troop of knights by efforts of several Tumans. At that division, which occurred after Batu's Western campaign between domains, brothers, etc., Sheban was allocated the area that formed the core of the Ulus. Wintering grounds were in the lower reaches of the Sirdarya, near the Aral Sea, in the steppe. And also wintering grounds were in Siberian trans-Ural region. This is a territory of present-day Bashkortostan, Chilabinsk, that is, Western Siberia. It was quite large Ulus, and this Ulus's support allowed Sheban's descendants to play a significant role in the subsequent events of Juchi's history. Orientalists say in general it should be not have been called Shabanid dynasty, but it went down in history as Shabanids. And it has the most direct relation to the history of origin of the Kazakhanate, because they were connected by numerous related ties, but politically they were also intervolved. Politically they were also intervolved. 
Sheba Sulus occupied a significant part of the territory of present-day Kazakhstan. Within its framework, for two centuries, there were complex ethnic and cultural processes. Wikipedia. In 1360, when the White Horde's ruler, Han Tuktamish, conquered the Golden Horde, the larger part of the White Horde left for Europe, and the old part of the Horde to the north of the lower reaches of the Sirdarya was gradually occupied by Sheibans. The entire region of Sarisu and Ulu Tao, as well as Turgai, were inhabited by representatives of Sheibans' clan. However, hordes or tribes subordinated to Sheibans in the mid-14th century took the name Uzbeks or Uzbeks, and just under this name they went down in history. Regarding the origin of the very name Uzbeks, there are still different points of view. The Uzbeks, as a people in a whole, were not homogeneous in composition. No matter how they tried to explain the name of these people in the name of the Golden Horde Uzbek Khan or as a self-sufficient name taken by itself. In any case, an interesting circumstance is that neither Aeropothes of Uzbek Khan's days and subsequent ones up to the 15th century no Persian sources, the nearest to us in time, never mentioned Uzbeks as part of the Golden Horde tribes. Regular relations of the Golden Horde with Egypt naturally gave Arab historians of that time rich material on the life and ethnographic composition of Uzbek Khan's possessions, which they drew from Egyptian ambassadors who were in the Golden Horde, and also from the Turkic Mongol ambassadors with whom Muslim scientists came. Works of these historians, together with the description of the Golden Horde by famous Arab traveler Ibn Battuta, who lived relatively long in the kingdom of Uzbek Khan, who personally communicated with the latter in his court, and who left us a lot of interesting domestic and economic information about the Golden Horde, give us a good idea of the main nationalities of Uzbek Khan's possessions. Arabic information of 14th century didn't mention any other Golden Horde nationalities, except the Mongols and Turks, less often the Kipchaks. Even in preambles of messages addressed to Uzbek Khan by the Sultan, written in gold and ink on a large sheet of Baghdad paper, Uzbek Khan was called the Sultan of the Mongols, Kipchaks and Turks. Thus, in Dashti Kipchak, the greater part of the population were Turkic tribes. The Mongols practically didn't make any radical changes in the ethnic composition of the Kipchaks. On the contrary, the Mongols themselves underwent Turkization. It should be noted that even after the death of Uzbek Khan, Juchi Zulus retained its name. In any case, none of Persian historians called it Uzbek's Ulus. At least the areas to the east and northeast from the lower reaches of the Sirdarya, which were original possession of the Sheban's house, are called by all historians Juchi Zulus. There is no single opinion among scientists about how it appeared and whom it designated. Some even believed that the term Uzbek arose after Golden Horde Khan Uzbek and during his rule the Golden Horde reached its highest power from 1312 to 1342. But anyway, modern Orientalists do not tend to believe that Golden Horde Khan Uzbek and the collective term Nomadic Uzbek are interrelated. Regarding the etymology of the word Uzbek, the matter is that it occurred before the 14th century when we speak about the coup of 1212. Before that, the name Uzbek was used 
This word is traditionally of Turkic origin, one's own back. This could be connected with the fact that he had declared the jury sovereignty from Karakorum. And when he proclaimed Islam as the state religion, he took the name Sultan Ilyas ad-Din, that is, defender of faith, follower of faith. As you know, names could be long enough, and they carried a certain load, semantic one, first of all. And from then on, his name, Uzbek, became a designation of the Sunni political legal doctrine, which relied on Islam and on Genghisism, reformated in the spirit of Sunnism. And on their swords, they spread the name all over the Ulus. And even later, led by Muhammad Shaybani, when they took control of present-day Central Asia, they brought this name with them. Perhaps only the military political elite came there, but the population was still all Iranian. The dominating political doctrine under which they were able to retain their power for three, four generations ahead, that is, to form an identity marker, began with Uzbek doctrine. As a political doctrine, as a cultural and political program, it was formed in the lower Volga region. The earth prevailed over all natural properties and racial particularities of the Mongols, and they all became completely like the Kipchaks as if they were of the same family, for the Mongols settled on the Kipchak's land, got married to their women and stayed to live on their land. al Omari. The term Uzbeks as a designation of the people in the broad sense of the word was used by Eastern authors a few decades before Uzbeks of Sheybani Khan began to move to the south, to the Amudarya oasis. Who did these authors mean by Uzbeks? What people was known to them as Uzbeks in the proper sense? Sharaf ad-Din Yazdi, the author of Amir Timur's official history written in 1425, is probably the first author who mentioned the Uzbeks. For example, describing the details of Amir Timur's campaign against Toktamish, when Toktamish, defeated by Timur, fled to the Volga, Yezdi wrote the following. Timur, taking his army and giving the order to march out light-handed, set out to pursue Toktamish Khan. He chased him with the fastest possible speed day and night. When he reached the ferrying across the Atil, and this ferrying was called Turatur, he attached to Rus Khan's son, Kuri Chak of Glan, who was with the lucky monarch, a detachment of Bahadur Uzbeks, who were in the ranks of the August Mulazims. Sharaf ad-Din Yazdi. Из истории Тимура from Temur's history, written by Nizamuddin Shami, Sharaf ad-Din Yezdi's predecessor during Temur's lifetime, we learn that in Mewarana, Urus, Khan's possession was known as the region of Uzbeks in the 14th century, and Urus Khan himself was named Uzbek Khan. In the subsequent historical works of the 15th century, for example, in writings of Abdurazak Samarkandi, Mirhond, Hond Demir, etc., all the Turkic Mongol tribes who roamed to the north of the Sirdarya or to the north, northwest and northeast from the possessions that were the territory of Juchi Zulus were definitely called the Uzbeks. Members of the ruling class of Chagatai Zulus at first were at war with the Uzbeks. They dragged them into their dynastic quarrels and then they entered into blood relationship with them. Perhaps the latest fact of close relations between Chagatai people and 
and Uzbeks watched the visit of Sultan Hussein Mirza to Abu Qair Khan's headquarters shortly before the capture of Gera's throne in hope of gaining support from the Uzbeks in this undertaking. Well, who were the Uzbeks in the 15th century and in the early 16th century, who, led by Sheybani Khan, 1451-1510, conquered Temurid's possessions and settled permanently in Central Asian oasis? What did they represent ethnically? There are only a few written sources remained. Among them, the most notable is the Book of Bukhara Guest, written by Uzbek Khan Isfagani. Regarding composition of Uzbek people neighboring with Temurid's possessions during Shaybani Khan's era and the borders of its settlement, Uzbek Khan wrote the following. Three people belong to the Uzbeks, who are the most glorious in Genghis Khan's possessions. To date, the first of them are all tribes related to Shaiban. The second people are Kazakhs, who are famous for force and fearlessness in the whole world. And the third people are Mangids, who are Astrahan kings. The counts of all these three peoples are at invariant hostility against each other, and each of them encroaches on the other. And when they win, they sell one another into slavery. They take them prisoner. They consider cattle and enemy people in their midst as permissible spoil of war, and they never depart from this rule. Ruzbek Khan is Fagani. This is from the 14th century, if I'm not mistaken, the author was Kazvini. This went back to the 14th century. If I am not mistaken, the author was Kazveni, who gave such a collective name to Turkic, Turkified and Mongol tribes who lived in the territory of Western Dashti Kipchak. The collective name of Uzbek, nomadic Uzbek, wasn't an ethnopolitical term, but some kind of collective one for all these tribes. This history is very complicated. How it became an ethnonym? It happened in the early 16th century, around 1500, when the term Uzbek acquired an ethnic sounding. But before that, it was a collective name of numerous tribes of different origins inhabiting the territory of Dashti Kipchak. All Uzbek tribes have very many respectable khans. Each tribe of great and famous descendants of Genghis Khan is called sultans, and the one who is greater than all of them is called a khan, that is, a great sovereign and ruler, in obedience to whom they would be unshakable. Uzbek Khan is Fagani, the book of Bukhara Guest. There can hardly be any doubt that Uzbek Khan's precise definition of the most important ethnic groups, called by common name Uzbeks, in the early 16th century included Turkic Mongol tribes of the former Sheiban Sulus, which stretch from the Urals to Ishim and Sarisu rivers to the north towards the Arctic Ocean. Don't forget that Siberian Khans came from Sheiban's house and subdued a significant part of Siberia. Dashti Kipchak tribes, or Oda Zulus, and the lower reaches of the Amber, Ural, and Volga to the Caucasus, occupied by the Mangids or Nogais. The latter, however, in the early 16th century, in great numbers, firmly settled on the Sirdaria plains, next to the Kazakhs, and considerably to the north of them. В науке считается, что этноним узбек 
In science, it is believed that the ethnonym Uzbek became ethnonym when Muhammad Shaybani, with a handful of nomadic Uzbeks, there were 300-400 of them, seized Mulwarana, an area of Timurids, who by that time became extremely weakened due to the endless struggle of numerous Amir Timur's descendants for power. And Muhammad Shaybani took advantage of the situation and conquered Mulwarana and took a long part of nomadic Uzbeks there. And then he brought there the term Uzbek and imposed it on the local people. And those who stayed with Janibek and Giri in eastern Desh to Kipchak were also nomadic Uzbeks by origin, but at that time they were called Uzbek Kazakhs. But before Muhammad Shaybani went to Melorana, Kazakh also had no ethnic sounding. It was the status of nomadic Uzbeks who at one time broke away from Abu Kair, migrated, left for Mogulistan. That is, it had the meaning be a Kazakh, such a social meaning. But in the early 16th century, both these words, Uzbek and Kazakh, acquired ethnic sounding. At the same time, the processes of political formation of the Kazakhanate or the Shaybanite state were underway. There was a formation of the Uzbek nation and the Kazakh nation. All these processes went in parallel, and the names followed these processes. Indeed, at the described time, the border of Uzbek territory reached the eastern areas of Turkestan inclusively. Khorezm wasn't an original Uzbek possession, and the steppe expanses up to Astrobat were occupied mainly by those mobile nomads, because even under Amir Timur's successor, Shahruh, 1405-1447, according to Samarkandi, Uzbeks, who became Kazakhs, made raids even on Mazandaran, penetrating there through Astrobat. According to Paul Pellieu, the name Uzbek means master of self, that is, free man. In this case, Uzbek, as the name of the nation, would then mean a nation of free people. In order to avoid confusion in connection with the term Uzbeks, it should be understood that Uzbeks, who lived in the northeastern areas of Juchi Zulus in the 14th-16th centuries, and modern Uzbeks are not the same. The composition of the Uzbek people included mainly the following ethnic parts. Turkic population of Mavorana, who as early as the 11th century began to use Turkic language. Tajik agricultural population who lived there since ancient times. Turkicized, in some cities, Iranian-speaking people who lost their native town. And nomadic Uzbeks who moved in large numbers from the lower reaches of the Amudarya and Sirdarya to the territory of present-day Uzbekistan in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. White Horde Uzbeks made up one of the main components in the ethnogenesis of the modern Uzbek people. Когда мы говорим о средневековом значении понятия Узбек, Ногай, Казах, when we talk about the medieval concept of Uzbek, Nogai, Kazakh, Tatar, Junga, these are not a designation of peoples, it's a slogan, it's a doctrine. A slogan is a flag under which adherents of a particular doctrine gather. My ancestors were somewhat Uzbeks, somewhat Bashkirs. Yes, my ancestors were under the doctrine of Noga and Uzbek, and this could exist simultaneously. They didn't contradict each other. 
For some time, the Noga steppes were ruled by Urusids, for example, Hak Nazar. By the way, he was also a pupil of Mangit Bees Shah Mamais, because they prepared not only Shebanids, but also Urusids and Gireis. The ancient ancestors of the Uzbeks were Sogdians, Khorezmians, Bactrians, Fergannians, and Sake Massaget tribes. The Uzbek began to unite from the 10th to 15th centuries. This led to a medley of the ancient Iranian population with ancient Turkic tribes in the period between the 11th and 13th centuries. Wikipedia. Traditionally, it is believed that there are 92 clans and tribes of Uzbeks of nomadic Deshti Kipchak origin, who were part of the future Uzbek nation. According to modern historian Tursin Sultanov, these 92 clans include the names of the majority of Turkic and some non-Turkic ethnic groups that inhabited Central Asia at that time. There is a legend that 92 people went to Medina, where they took part in the war of Prophet Muhammad against infidels and were converted to Islam by Holy Shahi Mardan. According to the legend, from these 92 people supposedly originated Uzbek tribes, called in the text also by the appellative Ilatia. To consolidate as an identity marker, it is necessary to gain a foothold in tradition, so that grandparents told their grandchildren about their great and glorious ancestor. The tradition didn't appear in the 14th century, but in the 15th and 16th century. Abul Qayyir, justifying the legitimacy of his claim to power in Juchi Zulus, explained that his ancestors, Shaibanids, had supported Uzbeks and preserved the Ulus to them. Later, Utemish Haji of Hibar from Shaibani dynasty wrote that Abul Qayyir allotted the Kokorda to Shaibanids or the Yezhen's descendants, he allotted the Akor to Batu's descendants, the Bosorda to Sheba's descendants, and to Tokai, Timur's descendants, he didn't even give a converted card. But it is a polemical expression, which was explained by vicissitudes of intra-dynastical strife between Shebanids and Tokai Timurids. However, when they had to go out against common enemies, they marched out by a united front. Anyway, the slogan of designating the marker of political and legal doctrine assumed importance later than the 14th century, when it was necessary to appeal to the glory of the famous and powerful ancestor who was Uzbek, then Abul Qayyur and others. According to sociologist Alisher Ilhamov, from the viewpoint of national identity and the meaning of this ethnonym, it is necessary to distinguish modern Uzbeks from nomadic Deshti Kipchak, Uzbeks of the 15th 19th centuries. Modern Uzbeks are descendants of at least three ethnic communities Sats, consisting of settled Turkic speaking predominantly urban population of mixed Turkic Persian origin and not possessing a separate tribal structure. Local Turkic tribes and clans from among so-called Chagatai clans who joined them as well as Oguz Turkic tribes and clans. Deshti Kipchak nomadic Uzbeks mostly migrated to Central Asia in the early 16th century. The first and second groups numerically prevailed, inhabiting both steppe territories and cities and large settlements, historically possessing a great political heft. Representatives of the third group inhabited the steppe exclusively.
What tribes did the people who called themselves the common name Uzbeks consist of? The answer to this question we find in the circumstances of accession to the throne of Sheban Khan's grandson, Abu Khir, 1412-1468. But about this you will know in our next episodes.